good evening from the Pompey Observatory on the road. I do not have my microphone with me tonight, so I'm going to uh, see if uh, the microphone, the built-in microphone, the laptop will do the job. If you can hear me, please give me a thumbs up. No boom yet, Shane. I am imaging uh, the Polaris region for uh, 10 minutes so I can compare Bortle 7 to Bortle's 4 and 2 and then hopping over to uh, IC 4587 which is the TCRB Good evening Larry, can you hear me at all? I do not have my microphone tonight so I'm using uh, relying on the laptop I was at the... Oh good, thank you. I am on the fifth floor of the Element Hotel and lo and behold the window opens. <laughs> Actually I could be playing hooky because I discovered that the door to the roof is unlocked and uh, I verified that I can get onto the roof and off the roof without getting locked onto the roof. But it's extremely windy here. We're talking about 20 to 30 miles per hour wind. So I am a lot safer sitting inside my room with the sea star looking straight out of the window. I did not realize they let windows be open in hotels these days. So we're capturing uh, 10 minutes worth of the North Star region to give TCRB a chance to rise a little bit. If you hear incredible noises, it's uh, the railroad track literally 20 feet from the hotel. Well, I was down in uh, Virginia uh, for grandparents' day at my grandkids' school, at my grandson's school, and I brought the sea star with me just so I can uh, show them the moon. And uh, we did look at the moon from Reston, Virginia. And when I discovered that uh, the sky is clear, actually it's crystal clear now, here. I plan to get onto uh, TCRB as often as possible, actually this may become uh, Dwarf's raison d'etre. Uh, dwarf may be sitting on uh, TCRB every night that it's clear. Had a very nice chat with the Sea Star folks at the NIF this afternoon. Actually, I pushed her hard enough that she uh, <laughs> she broke and uh, spilled the beans. They have a team, which referred to as the Large Aperture Team or the Large Aperture Group, designing indeed a bigger telescope, a Sea Star with a larger aperture, but they are nowhere near. Uh, bringing it to the market yet. Uh, they encountered uh, challenges that uh, they had not expected, but uh, she confirmed that they are indeed designing a bigger scope and that there were 
two teams, one focused on the C-Star S50, supporting it and making sure it stays state of the art. Uh, she did not mention whether they plan to release a newer S50 with improved sensor or otherwise. But uh, she did say that there is a large aperture team working on uh, building the bigger scope. Larry, I'm trying to uh, make the 16-inch mead at uh, in Oswego behave like the Sea Star. Uh, I'm going to start my nighttime testing uh, beginning next week with a bit of luck. But uh, right now, even though it is a uh, equatorially mounted scope, I'm using it as an alt as scope for all intents and purposes. Uh, I do not plan to align it. I just uh, send it uh, to the park position and then from there uh, ask it to go to a target and then uh, play it solve to correct for the target to find its place and uh, once it does that I plan to capture uh, frame after frame and stack them as I capture them and display the latest stacked image so uh, to answer your question uh, uh, when I tried talking to her about S80 or S100 uh, if I recall correctly she nodded on the S80 and not on the S100. So going from uh, 2 inch to 3 inch uh, is doable, but still. And uh, this is my uh, my guess. They're going to have to replace the plastic gears with metal gears. They're going to have to go with a better sensor, a bigger battery. Everything's going to get bigger and heavier in the process. And I suspect that the price will um, grow with the with the size of the aperture. So if a two-inch scope is selling at uh, four hundred or five hundred dollars, a three-inch scope uh, will be selling at a nine to nine hundred to a thousand dollars easily. I will be going to Bortle 2 Sky in a couple of weeks into the Blue Mountain Lake region of the Adirondacks. And I plan to take an image of the Polaris region. Notice that Polaris is not in the picture. For some reason, Sea Star does not like Polaris. Uh, yes, it is pointing north, but uh, Polaris is outside the frame. So I have data from uh, Larry, I suspect that uh, it will sell better than uh, Celestron's Origin. It will be comparable aperture for a fraction of the cost most likely. There is nothing that replaces the awe, the awe and wonder of looking at a Saturn or a Jupiter directly through an, eye, through an eyepiece. EAA will never replace that. But uh, uh, visual observing is not going to let us look at uh, the, the darker nebula and galaxies. So there is there is a place for both.
unfortunately the window is not wide enough to allow me to slew from uh, Polaris to TCRB I'm gonna have to move uh, C-Star and uh, let it do its wonder I mean it it will stare into the sky and discover it's looking at the wrong place and it will uh, correct its position So I walked around uh, the showroom of the Northeast Astronomy Forum, and uh, there, there were there were quite a few vendors. I took pictures of pretty much everybody there. I do not have the C Star plugged into power yet. Uh, I'd like to cycle the battery. I have not done that in a while, so it is at 74 percent. I'm going to drop it to about. Uh, just under 40 percent and then plug it in yeah I hear you Saturn is starting to rise before the Sun uh, Jupiter is hopeless right now it's going to be a while before we see Jupiter again it is a late day planet and I missed the conjunction between Mars and Saturn thanks to clouds they were less than a degree apart and uh, C star would have gotten them both but uh, no joy there it did look smaller uh, there were some missing uh, regulars like Lunt was not there for example I got my 10 minutes hello night waves okay uh, stay stand by I'm gonna go move the telescope so we can look for the TCRB for a bit Let's see how badly we did. <laughs> okay. TCRB is very close to Galaxy IC 2, 5, 8, 7. Or is it four five eight seven? Stand by.
No, it is four five eight seven. Sorry. Okay. This is more like it. Yep, this is the region we want to be in. NASA is very specific that we must not confuse or mistake T Corona Borealis for Tau Corona Borealis. They are two different star systems. T oh good, object is centered. Then let's start capturing. We're going to give it a minute or two and then see if uh, Mark will mark the spot. <laughs> Good evening. Hello, hello. Yes, I brought my telescope with me and I'm sitting in uh, on the border of New York and New Jersey on the fifth floor of an element long stay hotel which allows the window to open surprisingly and a sticking sea star out of the window making sure it doesn't fall on the cars below do you want to auto focus we can do that okay stand by Let's see if we have, we have the spot. Yep, we have the spot. All right. I skipped the autofocus because it's not going to be a critical image. We're just watching to see if a very faint star will become very bright. I did not want to take a chance uh, of driving home tonight since I started I started in Virginia this morning and drove uh, a solid six hours. I usually come down for the Neef, leaving uh, home in the morning and returning in the evening, but uh, for safety's sake, and because I still have a free night from Marriott that I decided to use, leftover points from all the travel that I did when I was still gainfully employed. Okay, marking the spot, there is 4587.
So T Corona Borealis is uh, let's see, 17 degrees. So it is two minutes away from uh, IC4587. So I suspect this is uh, T Corona Borealis TCRB. According to the scientific literature, it's a binary system with a small white dwarf and a large red star and the little one is stealing from the big one until it has stolen enough and then it goes supernova and repeats the process it is supposed to dim significantly before it goes supernova and NASA reports that it has dimmed significantly that's why they are predicting that the supernova will occur between now and September And when it occurs, it should last uh, about a day, several hours. A good, a well-placed galaxy right now or cluster is uh, Hercules M13. It's not too far from uh, TCRB. It's just about 14 degrees away, so I should be able to get it. <laughs> well, I have nothing better to do. I am uh, gainfully retired, as we say. And I keep an eye on uh, the astronomy news. Uh, any other kind of news these days is very depressing. <laughs> So we're going to give TCRB 10 minutes and uh, get in the habit of looking at it regularly. But I'm going to hop on uh, Hercules now and uh, compare Hercules from Bortle 7 to Hercules from Bortle uh, 4 and 2 as another uh, set of data. I'm already looking forward, by the way, to the lunar eclipse on September 17. That should be a nice one.
On the home front, I mounted my 11 inch uh, Edge HD Celestron onto the iOptron uh, S Mount Pro. The weight limit on that mount is 33 pounds. The Edge HD with the camera and the focuser weighed 32 and a half pounds. Uh, one of the nice things about the Neve is I got to talk to the founder of iOptron. Nice guy. And we, we went very technical on the design. They have a new mount. I believe it's the HA71 that will carry a 70 pound payload without any counterweights. When I told him that I was using the SMP for astrophotography, uh, he admonished me. He said, no, you don't use an S mount for astrophotography. You use an equatorial mount for that. I said, no, <laughs> I want to use it to track the International Space Station. And it is not following any of the normal arcs in the sky. It's going its own jelly way, jolly way, and I have a lot more control over an as mount than I would over an equatorial mount in that case. He reluctantly agreed. But the one problem that I have encountered with the SMP now is uh, it cannot sit still. When I pointed to a target, the stars are jumping around. Uh, yes, granted it is overloaded, but uh, once it starts stacking them, I'm getting some good stuff out of it. And uh, when I spoke with the, with the Ioptron engineers, they were surprised that I'm having the bouncing, and they recommended tightening everything again as tight as we can make them, so uh, we'll see if that makes a difference. Uh, also had a chat with the Celestron engineers about the CGX mount, the one where the board died and then I replaced the board. I'd like to use it as an AS mount, as an alt AS mount, and by setting the latitude to the equator, uh, it turns into an alt as mount, so the RA and deck motors will become uh, uh, azimuth and altitude motors, and everything I tested works, the only problem is the handset, the hand box, the hand controller, refuses to recognize it as, it refuses to let me designated as an alt as mount and is insisting that it is an equatorial mount. Fast forward to Ioptron. Every single one of their equatorial mounts can be used as an alt as mount as well. He said uh, you just check the box as to whether you want to use it as alt as or equatorial. So went back to the Celestron engineers and uh, after a very lengthy discussion they agreed that it's only a couple of lines of code but that their software engineers are way too busy to be bothered with giving us this flexibility. All we're saying is when I uh, invoke any of the Celestron ASCOM drivers there is a box there that allows me to select whether it is in alt as or an equatorial mount except that the hand controller for the CGX overrides whatever box I check and insists that it is an equatorial mount. Again, it's come on guys. Ooh! 
New York Raider fan, I forgot to ask him about the mosaic mode, the mosaic update, sorry. So for those who joined us in the last couple minutes, uh, this is the star that uh, we're keeping an eye on, TCRB. When it goes supernova, it will be visible for less than a day. And uh, with a lot of luck, we'll be able to, to view it. In about a minute or so, we'll hop over to M13. Get that for about uh, oh, 10 minutes worth and then repeat the process when I get home and then when I go to uh, Blue Mountain Lake to the Adirondacks. So we'll have uh, Bortel 7, Bortel 4 and Bortel 2, same target. I'm surprised how few stars we are seeing here. They may have passed through, but uh, considering sky pollution, we would not see them. All right, I'm 13. There is Iridium. <laughs> Speak of satellites. And there is another one. Night waves, I do not bother with leveling the sea star. It's doing very well, thank you. Sitting at the window in a hotel, totally unleveled. Glider rider, hello. Okay, th these were planes that went through. And there is the cluster. I'm not sure what airport is closest here, but there is a very heavy aircraft traffic. Larry, you jinxed it. Here's your satellite. I don't know what else is in the eastern sky that I can see through that window. 
that we can go for after M13. It'd be nice if I can find the nebula. Enjoy your dinner, night waves. Okay, we'll, <clears throat> we'll go for 62.10 next. Thank you. This M13 looks miserable. <laughs> that, that's not the M13 I'm used to seeing at home.
Last week I had uh, two very good nights in which I imaged the East Vale Nebula and then the West Vale Nebula and uh, I applied Starnet++ to strip the image from all the stars and just to keep the nebulosity. It came out very nice. I am uh, recording a short video, t a short tutorial uh, to illustrate how one can do that far from recommending image manipulation by deleting stars but just it's another tool in our toolkit then the, the, the veil nebula looks very different without the stars that's all So I should have that done early next week and uh, publish it. And on Tuesday I am meeting with the with the folks at Oswego to work out on the protocol for uh, nighttime observation at the observatory there with the 16-inch scope. There are concerns that the telescope is very close to Lake Ontario and that the moisture of the lake will, uh, will reduce the quality of the imaging. So uh, one of the retired professors indicated that he has never been able to see Jupiter's great red spot or the polar ice caps on Mars with the 16-inch telescope. So at this point I do not know what to expect but uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Here comes another plane. Quite a few aircraft flying outside by window. And the wind is howling. I don't know if you can hear it. In some ways, I'm glad I'm not on the roof. <laughs> I did observe that they have three cameras on the roof. So, uh, I don't know if anybody is watching them or if they are just recording with them. And I don't know if they have lights on the roof either.
Good evening, open eye. Yes, the C star takes uh, one frame at a time and stacks them in real time and displays the stacked image. I have uh, a several videos showing the performance of the C star and what it can do. But in essence, it is uh, what's known as uh, electronically assisted astronomy. It's a smart telescope with uh, a filter wheel, a go-to mount, a, a dew heater for the lens, a sensor, an autofocuser, and a tripod, uh, plus a separate solar filter, all for uh, under $500 now. I bought it at $400 initially. I am on travel today, staying at the hotel in Bortel 7. So I'm gathering uh, sample data from various targets so I can compare them to a Bortel 4 and a Bortel 2. Okay, Larry, let's go to NGC Fortunately, I have a uh, very good horizon here, so 9 degrees should not be a problem. It found it. Let's make sure we turn on the filter and let's get started. It's only 18 arc seconds by 18 arc seconds, it's tiny. Yeah, that's alright. It says no objects to mark. I wonder if it has the right part of the sky. Yeah, I peeked quickly at Stellarium. I don't know where we are.
Okay, Larry, we, we are in concurrence. Stellarium is showing it as a 0.35 arc minutes, which will make it 30 arc seconds. So we, we are consistent here. I do not understand why uh, C star is not marking it correctly. There's no objects to mark. Yes, indeed. I will try to do the same at the same uh, altitude tomorrow, if possible. What's the weather going to be like this coming week? Astrospheric. Yeah, we, we should have clouds Sunday night, so... Uh, and Monday is going to be clear. Ooh, this is nice. It says it's going to be clear Monday from Monday morning through Tuesday noon. Uh, solid 36 hours of uh, crystal clear skies with above average seeing. So I will be able to repeat that process from uh, Bordel 4 and compare them. I plan to give this one 10 minutes and then uh, pack up my equipment, close the window and get some sleep before I get back on the road. Winter was very cloudy for us but we have been getting uh, uh, at least one or two good nights per week which is fine. There is your planetary nebula. This will be a nice target. Monday night for the big scope. 
30 or 40 seconds is comparable to the size of Jupiter so it will give the 11 inch a good challenge Do you think C star will get the asteroid palace? D does it know about it? Or do we have to enter? Uh, that remains my one frustration with C star, the inability to enter uh, RA and deck. We'll give it a search in the catalog, see if uh, if it is in uh, C-Star's catalog. Hi David, it was good seeing you this morning, or yeah, this morning. The Sea Star catalog does not have Asteroid Palace in it. Let's see if there is another way of finding it. I don't see anything recognizable to sea star in the vicinity of Pallas at this point. Let's see if the sky live. will show it. right now is at uh, altitude 11 degrees Hercules is 22 so it's way out of the way yeah I, I don't see anything that would be in the catalog right now I'll give it a try As soon as NGC 6210 gets to 10 minutes, we will try to find Pallas.
Yeah, Palace is not too far from uh, NGC 6210 actually. Okay, let's see if we can find it. Looking for uh, right ascension sixteen forty six. We're very close to within a minute. There is Palace, okay. Thanks, Larry, for the suggestion. Let's see what it's going to look like. <laughs> I'm still in downstate New York, David C. Hello, Jacob. Object is centered. Let's see what it looks like. Filter off. Let's capture it. can see the effect of the wind here. David, uh, the only reason I am on YouTube tonight is I want to get data from a Bortle 7 for comparison's sake with Bortle 4 and I'll be going to Bortle 2 in two weeks. So I'm trying to get the uh, same targets as much as possible. The sky under Bortle 7 is uh, miserable to say the least. I promise you a nice show with the uh, Bortle 2, Bortle 4, and Bortle 7 side by side. Assuming that the sky is clear when we go to the Adirondacks, I'll be there for just two nights. Last year, we had to deal with the smokes from Alberta, from Canada, from the, 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 the fires. When I drive my, from my house to Syracuse University, all of 13 miles, <laughs> I go through portals 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, <laughs> slash 9, over a 13 mile trip. I don't know which one of these is Palace.
the only way to find out is to take the same picture again at a different day and see which one is missing. Okay, gentlemen, uh, good seeing you, good chatting with you. I want to call it a night so I can be up bright and early in the car again to hit the road. So for now, uh, so long from Rockland Community College. Good night. Should be able to see you all Monday night. We're expecting crystal clear skies in upstate New York, so I'm looking forward to uh, repeating tonight's experiment and keeping an eye on uh, TCRB.